Eddie Pilot. My name is Lieutenant Commander Mr. Everything, and I will be your instructor for this block of instruction. This block of instruction is the third class in the First Naval Aerospace Squadron's flight school boot camp, titled Six Degrees of Basic Flight. All right, so we are going to be using in this class, we will be using a saber and its uh, control scheme, plus we will be using a keyboard and mouse located here on the screen. This is not a joystick and throttle exercise. This is a keyboard and mouse exercise exercise. In post-production, I will input certain arrows and indicators on the screen to assist with this instruction. Now let's take a look at the Saber. The Saber is a UEE fighter which lost the contract versus the Hornet in replacing the Gladius. If you are lucky enough to be in the 1st Naval Aerospace Squadron, you will have opportunity to fly the Sabre, which in my opinion is a way better fighter than the Hornet. There are a number of thrusters on your Sabre. Primarily, you have your aft thrusters or your main engines, which are located which is this one there and this one there. Uh, these thrusters will provide the majority of your movement capability. There is the ability to fly in atmosphere as well, but uh, that's the topic of another video. We are going to be talking about basic flight at this time. If you look right there, you see a thruster. Uh, a maneuvering thruster, and there should be as well another maneuvering thruster in the front upper, which you can't see from this location. Okay, and above you're going to see this thruster located right there, and you'll have one on both sides. Same with the aft thruster, you'll have one on both sides. You'll also have thrusters underneath. There's one located there and one located there. And they will both be also on the left and right side of your saber. For a total of eight thrusters, the rear thrusters are gimbaled, the front thrusters are not, and this will impact the way you can maneuver your ship when dogfighting. Okay, having gimbal thrusters in the rear means you have more control over the tail of your ship when maneuvering. The front of your ship, if you think of it like a helicopter where you have only lift in the center and then in the back you have a tail rotor and that tail rotor allows the tail to go left or right uh, based on the thrust. If you think of a forklift that the maneuvering is actually done from the tail and not from the front. That's important to know when when dogfighting. Let's go ahead and jump in to the cockpit and then I will explain how those thrusters impact the way your ship maneuvers. Because we're located at the First Naval Aerospace Squadron's forward operating base, uh, I've already received permission to take off from the flight controller, so there's no need for me to call or communicate to be able to take off. So let's go ahead and jump into the air. Okay, now, by jumping into the air, what's happening is you can see that one of the thrusters firing uh, right by the wheel well. You can see the two thrusters there firing and then the two thrusters in the front firing. So now, 
if I was to want to nose up, my forward thrusters would have to provide more thrust and the back thrusters, you notice that there is thrust coming out of the top gimbaled thruster to push the tail down and there's now thrust from the front top thrusters pushing the nose down. Your flight control computer reacts to what you're telling it. You tell it, hey, I want to fly in this direction, and it fires the proper combination of thrusters to get your ship to face in that direction. So if I wanted to roll to the left like I'm doing, then what it'll do is it'll fire the two right lower thrusters and the two left upper thrusters to make me roll. And if I wanted to go the other way, it would fire the opposite thrusters. Okay. If any of your thrusters are knocked out, then your performance will be degraded. If you lose one of your upper thrusters, then you're not going to be able to roll or pitch in that direction as fast as you normally would. Okay. So I think you understand the the basic concept is I have a I have a crosshair that I'm going to move around and my saber is going to try to face in that direction. So let's take a pitch or let's uh let's yaw a little bit. So you see my uh triangle three-pointed crosshair and my saber is trying to reach it. Now, if I move it there, it just gradually moves. And if I move it very far, it tries to move very fast. So based on how far away your crosshair is from the front of your ship will determine. Now, I am level right now. I'm a level indicator. You'll notice that when I turn, the ship will automatically roll. You see how it's kind of... Now that's because I'm not rolling into the maneuver. I use Q and E to roll. Q and E. I use my arrow to... Uh, determine my angle of approach and then I use my W key to thrust upwards when I let go it gradually drops to zero but you'll notice that the thrusters continued to fire because it's providing negative thrust to slow you down uh, if, if you basically, we're going to, we're going to write over our forward operating base. There we go. Now I'm going to thrust for three seconds. And then what we're going to do is we're going to count how many seconds it takes to stop. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what that's telling you is you have to slow down before you hit something. Mainly the, what's causing that is the thrusters used to go forward are much larger you can see there, than the thrusters to slow you down. So let's see if I can thrust forward, let go, and then you watch the thrusters trying to slow us down. And there they are. 
throws forward and retros. Yeah, so they're much slower. On the left side of your HUD, you should have learned this during the Know Your Cockpit, but on the left side, you've got a speed limiter, you've got a thrust indicator, and a velocity, and we've got altitude. Uh, so let's go ahead and just do a slow orbit around our base. So we press C to go to cruise control, and you can see the icon changes on my limiter. When I hit C, that little cruise control icon disappears. Okay, now we slowly turn. And I use Q and E to counter the natural tendency of your aircraft to pitch the other direction. And we use, uh, we hold F if we want to look out at the base without uh, turning. Or we could press Z and go to free look and then press Z to go back to control. And you notice uh, our velocity is only 30, so we're not going super fast. But as we turn, our thrusters are firing to keep us in the air, but they're also firing to turn us. I roll a little bit, 20 degrees possibly. which will become important in our fifth class, which we talk about at flying in the atmosphere. The sun is starting to go down, uh, which is a good thing because that actually is, the darker it is, the easier it is for you to see your HUD. Uh, Currently, there is no way to change the color of your, our HUD, so depending on the background, you sometimes will not be able to see your HUD, so you will need to, uh, you will need to learn to fly without it. And there we are, back to our, back to our base. Reduce the, the uh, limiter to as low as I can. It does not go to zero. You can see my velocity is still one, so I'm still going to be moving. But if I hit tap C, it'll turn off the forward thrust 100%. So I will just hover. Now, without without cruise control, I can still set a limiter and I can press the forward thrust with the W key and I can gradually increase my uh, maximum velocity, roll with my Q and W. Let's go, let's go the other direction. Now I want you to notice something. When I'm flying straight, the crosshair is in the center. But when I'm turning, depending on how fast I'm turning, there is something called look ahead. I have look ahead turned on, so my head will gradually turn in the direction of the turn. You see the crosshair is slightly off to the left, or, you know, how it moves from left to right based on the direction that I'm turning. All right, so now on your velocity indicator, uh, if you uh, have your limiter up higher, 
then of course you're going to go faster when you press your uh, you're going to go faster when you're thrusting uh, if you allow your limiter to get into the red then you're going to be moving fast enough where you're not going to be able to turn efficiently so it's best when in a dogfight to keep your speed in the blue so that you can turn efficiently. Okay, I'm going to turn on my headlights, which is L. You can't see anything because my headlights aren't pointing at anything. But if I was to... get closer to our base you can now see my headlights are lighting things up got a collision alert okay so anytime I press the thrust you can see the thrust on the left go up right you can see the indicator on my limiter go up and you can see uh, yeah you can just see everything how it works now I'm using Q and E because this is habit for me um, you'll have to develop muscle memory but I will roll or rotate into my turn because uh, in an atmosphere, your wings or your flight surfaces here will have an impact on your the lift of your aircraft and the ability to turn based on its ailerons and rudder and uh, elevators. The Sabre was a, uh, is a fighter designed for fighting inside of an atmosphere as well as space. It was a well-designed machine and I am proud to say that the 1st Naval Aerospace Squadron is equipped with Sabres. Okay, so now the limiter is very important to prevent you, the pilot, from accidentally slamming into the ground or uh, overthrusting, right? Right now I'm overthrusting. So if I bring my limiter down, I can move slowly, even though I'm holding the buttons down, I can move slowly, make minor adjustments. Let's lower the landing gear by pressing N. And then control to go down. But if I don't want to go down very far, I can bring my limiter all the way to zero. But I'll still go down when I press control. And it will be a very soft, subtle landing. Okay, when you're in the air, uh, there are six degrees of control. One of them is pointing, you know, um, but that's not part of the six degrees. That's just that's just aiming in a direction. So that I guess that would be the seventh degree of movement. The uh, first degree is up, straight up, and you would just press. The second is straight down, which you would press control. And then, just like any FPS, you would press W to go forward, and you would press S or Sierra to go backwards. But you can also strafe with A to the left and D to the right, left and right, 
front and back. Up and down. There you go. And, uh, and then, of course, attitude control. Okay, so we're here. We're back to base. Let's go ahead and land. Too fast. Don't want to slam into the ground. All right, pilots, that's the end of our uh, third block of instruction. Dismissed.